2011 Margaret Brent Award recipient, Eleanor Dean Acheson. Eleanor Dean Acheson, known more familiarly as LD, was born into a commitment to the law. As the granddaughter and namesake of Dean Acheson, Secretary of State under President Truman, and daughter of David Acheson, who served in the Department of Justice under Robert Kennedy, she was steeped in a legacy of public service. Moreover, her mother taught American history and was an author who focused on the significant decisions of the Supreme Court. With all of these prominent examples of the power and reach of the legal profession, L.D. Acheson knew it was the best way to contribute to communities and society at large. A classmate with Hillary Clinton at Wellesley College, she graduated in 1969, attended the George Washington University Law School, and then clerked for a federal judge. L.D. subsequently entered private practice with Ropes and Gray in Boston as the first and, for a long time, only woman associate and then partner in the litigation department. During her 19 years at the firm, Eldie distinguished herself as a great litigator and mentor and was instrumental in the formal establishment of their prominent pro bono program. Leading by example, Eldie represented women challenging Massachusetts' absolute preference for veterans in the case of Feeney versus Commonwealth, which was litigated all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Eldie's move from the private sector into public service had a rather remarkable genesis. In 1991, she decided to contribute to the Clinton presidential campaign and by the following year ended up heading the New England Women Leaders for Clinton Gore. Calling upon her former Wellesley classmate to speak at a fundraising reception, she and a group of about 70 women eventually raised more than $1.5 million, 34% of the funds raised for the Democratic ticket in New England. With that effort putting her on the political landscape, it was no surprise that President Clinton decided to harness Eldie's drive, dedication, and legal expertise by appointing her Assistant Attorney General for the Office of Policy Development in 1993. Eldie advised the President and Attorney General Janet Reno on matters of legal policy, but it is her achievement in overseeing the evaluation, nomination, and confirmation of federal judges and federal prosecutors which may be her greatest legacy. Eldie was instrumental in achieving the president's aspiration of establishing a diverse judiciary in terms of gender, ethnicity, and race, and making the federal bench look more like America. Her office fought its way through 370 judicial appointments that resulted in the most diverse federal bench with the highest number of women in our nation's history to that time. From the addition of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg to the U.S. Supreme Court, to the 50% increase in women in the United States District Courts and Courts of Appeals, the federal judiciary notably grew from 91 women judges to 167 during Eldie's tenure. Eldie's commitment to advancing opportunities for women lawyers has been at the heart of her professional life, whether it was her dedication to mentoring and promoting women associates at her law firm, her pro bono work providing services to advance women's issues and rights, or her commitments and work for women political candidates. She and her partner, Chief Judge Emily Hewitt, have counseled scores of women lawyers as their careers have developed, offering their advice, support, recommendations, and friendship. LD continues her commitment to fostering the careers of able and diverse attorneys as Vice President, General Counsel, and Corporate Secretary of Amtrak. For her role in advancing the cause of women in law, the American Bar Association Commission on Women in the Profession is proud to present the 2011 Margaret Brent Women Lawyers of Achievement Award to Eleanor Dean Acheson. Wow. Thank you does not begin to cover my gratitude and appreciation to each and all responsible for my being here. To those who nominated me for this wonderful and humbling award, I am grateful for your thoughtfulness and generosity as well as your colleagueship and friendship over these years. To the ABA Commission on Women in the Profession, I am deeply honored to be one of this year's awardees and have been quite swept up in the excitement of it since Roberta Liebenberg called me to tell me the good news as her message read. Not having a clue what that meant, I was cautious in responding, and only after a few traded calls realized she was not calling 
for a client with an Amtrak problem. <laughs> Thank you to Barbara Leff and Paul Bieschi and Veronica Munez uh, and all of the staff of the Commission for your great production work as a wonderful video and to Beverly Tate, who fielded all my calls and emails with grace and just the right guidance. I owe a great debt to my family for their values, support, and love, indelible role models all. Every day I miss my brilliant, principled, and passionate historian mother who lived her commitment to civil rights and opportunity for all and taught American history with that decided and determined perspective to generations of junior high and high school students. Every day I talk to my almost 90-year-old lawyer father, a greatest generationer who served in the Pacific and later in the Kennedy Justice Department. And he's now busy with his latest book project. I draw great comfort and joy from my two brothers and their families, and I surely would not be here but for the cheerleading patience, love, and support of my much accomplished and dear spouse and partner in all things, Emily Hewitt. Congratulations to my co-honorees, Paulette Brown, Karen Mathis, Colonel Ryan, Justice Tomjanovich, and Chief Justice McLaughlin. It is a special honor to be in your company, to be associated in this way with you and with all previous Margaret Brandt awardees, many of whom I've had the privilege of knowing and working with. And it is quite special also, in family terms, to be in Toronto, home to many cousins and a city from which my namesake great-grandmother, Eleanor Gooderham, and her husband emigrated to the U.S. in the late 1880s, making their son, Dean Atchison, the first U.S. citizen on that side of our family. To be a lawyer in the United States is a great privilege and affords great power. We may be a government of laws and not of men, but no law, not the Constitution, nor any legislation or regulation is self-executing, self-enforcing, or self-validating. Those acts and the justice or lack of it are largely a function of lawyers and judges. We are the stewards and fiduciaries of our system. Who we are as American lawyers and judges matters as the more we reflect the broad diversity of all in our society, the closer we come to our goal of equal justice under law. Lawyers and judges must navigate the difficult fault lines where now 21st century issues of equality, inclusion, and fairness meet our 18th century constitution and a statutory scheme similarly a product of our past. Each of us, lawyer and judge, strives to make the law work fairly, justly, and inclusively for our time. We try to achieve what Learned Hand called the spirit of liberty. He said, the spirit of liberty is the spirit which seeks to understand the minds of other men and women. The spirit of liberty is the spirit which weighs their interests alongside its own without bias. Indeed, we have seen that law is changed and justice and opportunity are advanced as the legal profession and the judiciary have begun to reflect the rich diversity of our citizenry and bring that mix of experience, insights, and ideas to the work that we do. The ABA has led and supported American lawyers and judges in our vocation to achieve equal justice under law and to that end, diversify the profession and promote access to legal help. The Commission on Women in the Profession seized that warrant and with courageous leadership and with strategies and tactics audacious and subtle, has changed the face of the profession forever, opened up opportunities for women of all backgrounds, grown and diversified our ranks, and thus improved every aspect of our system of law and justice. I am a beneficiary of the Commission's leadership and work and am deeply grateful for your commitment and success. I have been afforded extraordinary opportunities to exercise the privilege and power of lawyering. First, by the federal judge for whom I clerked, then in turn by a great law firm, by a president of the United States, 
and by the heads of organizations as diverse as the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force and Amtrak, at least in part because they were seeking change and diversity, a better process and fairer outcomes for all. I have tried to keep to that same course, mindful of our privilege and our responsibility. Much has been accomplished, but as we know, much work lies ahead. I look forward to doing my share. Thank you for this inspiring award and the powerful experience that comes with it.